much as you um, are stable inside the awareness, as awareness itself, you'll begin to recognize that you can perceive people more energetically, or your interactions are more energetic, more than that they are merely mental or intellectual or verbal or something. Mm -hmm. you, you more feel the life. You sense uh, things more. You're not interested in the details or the person. So you will not feel intrusive to them, because you're not interested in the person. I'm not interested in the person, so I don't feel like you intrude in the person. But the person may feel deeply challenged by the presence, because the presence is actually beyond the person. It actually doesn't take the person to be significant, which is a blow to the person, in a sense, if you follow. If I take the person and we are working together, and then all kind of tricks are happening, but the self does not acknowledge the person in quite the same light. It is always speaking to you as consciousness. So this is what I call jumping over the moon. It is referring to you as consciousness. But the mind is trying to get you to speak as a person, like you have a personal problem. And this is not good. If you can begin to listen from the place of consciousness, and if you are the consciousness, when you speak with others, you automatically, your energy, is helping them to function as consciousness and not as person. This is very different from the regular communication. It is a kind of communion, when you are not just speaking uh, person to person. Does anybody understand what I am speaking? Thank you. So it is not just merely person speaking with person, but you are speaking from a higher level, from the place of consciousness or presence. And because you are speaking at this level of presence, you see, automatically it draws the attention of consciousness in the other body to function as presence. Every day you leave home or whatever, if you leave home somehow in the state of personhood, then in a way you are saying to the whole world, you know, I am a person and I am going to relate to you as persons, and let's set the tone right. That is your graphic equalizer for your interactions that day. But if you are in, as consciousness, the, everything changed. The game changes. The way things are experienced is changing. Also, you see, uh, your your interactions with beings is much lighter, is much deeper at the same time, much more profound and more satisfying than if you are relating only as person. Now, I'm not saying to go out and do this, but although you can try, and it will also have its effect. But I go the other way. I tell you to go to the self and be the self. From the self, it blesses every other aspect of your expression, is blessed automatically. So you don't have to go around lighting candles or putting on switches. You just stay in the place of the self, everything is automatic. I really would like you to hear this thing in your heart. Your being the self is uh, automatic sharing. You see, you may go somewhere, someone comes to you and says, Thank you. Says, Sorry? Yeah. Thank you. For what? Just, I saw you sitting here and I don't know what's happening, but I feel very peaceful when I see you. Yeah? Did you share something? You're not conscious of that sharing. You see, uh, you don't have to intentionally share, you just be. You see? The sun doesn't doesn't shine. It is just there, and shining happens from it, like that. I remember when I first went to Tiruvannamalai. Not the first time. First time was in 1994, and uh, the second time was um, maybe 2005 or something like this. And uh, I went there for a break, because we were having satsangs a lot in Europe, and I wanted just to have a break. So I went to Tiruvannamalai in 2005, maybe, and uh, just for holiday. And it so happened that uh, I used to go and sit outside a chai shop opposite Ramana Ashram. I would just go and sit there. I liked it there, under the big tree there. And then I noticed that uh, there was a group of people who were sitting there, the same people, like, no? They were sitting there, and then our eyes met. And I said, Oh, they said, the guy said, Hi. And he came and he asked me, 
um, uh, can I ask you something? Uh, and I said, sure, you know. And he said, um, uh, are you a teacher or something like this? I said, uh, why? What is that? He said, because we're sitting here and um, we've been coming here for the last few days. And uh, what happens is we notice when we come here, we're sitting with you and we're feeling very peaceful. And I want to know if you're doing something to us. <laughs> You see? I said, well, <laughs> no, I'm not, doing, I'm not doing anything at all, you know. Then they said, you know, it's very, very nice to meet you, and we'd like to know if, you, if we can ask you some questions. I said, okay, okay. And he says, no, no, not just us, there are others who would like to come. And I said, okay, you can come to my room. And then uh, they came to my room and looked and says, the room is too small. I said, how many of you are there? They said, no, no, we thought that if it was okay with you, we will hire a room around the corner. And this has started. And I said, okay. And then we went, they hired a place called Ragini's. Many of you know, because you probably have been to Tiruvannamalai. And this is how the satsang started there in Tiruvannamalai, like this. And then after just maybe two weeks, the place is completely full of people like that. So it was not for the intention. I didn't feel, yes, uh, I'm going there with that intention. Actually, I wanted to rest. And so... <laughs> eh? <laughs> so I well, needed to rest from traveling around, because I don't like traveling so much, actually. And uh, so this is how it, how it started. So in the same way, you are moving in your life, whatever you're doing, whatever you're doing, even if you spend a lot of time at home and you take care of your family and whatever it is, you cannot close that light. Hmm? Don't try to demonstrate it, but somehow you'll find that in its own way, you know, you'll have conversations, you'll know whether you will move further with these conversations, if there's genuine space or not. You have to learn these things, you come, they happen naturally in you. You share from your present light uh, what you can, and more power will come like that. Sometimes your sharing with others become your sadhana also, that you begin to grow through this sharing also. Hmm. But if you intend to share, be careful. Just uh, you live and you have a love in your heart, you know, and uh, somehow, even if you feel to share, that could also come from the self also. You see? It could also come. I remember the story of Ramakrishna like this. There would come a time, his being was so saturated with, with, with God, that he used to go on top of the temple and cry out, you know, my children, where are you? I'm waiting, where are you? don't you come? Why don't you come? <laughs> Nobody would come. Just one cat, meow. <laughs> then gradually people start to come like that to him. You see. Leave everything to the Supreme, to the Divine uh, Will. Unfold. And if you are the consciousness, when you speak with others, you automatically, your energy is helping them to function as consciousness and not as person. This is very different from the regular communication. It is a kind of communion. When you are not just speaking, uh, person to person. You just stay in the place of the self, everything is automatic.